What's up, Unlock Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to set your environments up so they're peak productivity environments? Most people have no clue how to do this. Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. Normally, it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener to show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle from Unlocking Your Inner Strength and Newell Strength once again with episode number 73 of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. So today, going to go over some mindset stuff as usual to start out. And then we'll get into the four biggest nutrition mistakes that I've seen over the years that people make on a consistent basis. So first things first, it's very, very natural for all of us to get into a rut from time to time. The two assets that you must protect at all times, and I've gone over this before, are your energy and your confidence. So how do you manage your energy? Your energy is your workouts, your meditation, your sleep, really. Your confidence is focusing on three wins you've had each day. Could be small little things. Uh, Could be what you're grateful for already in your life. But the brain, you have to remember, is hardwired for the negative. It's going to pick up on the negative. It's going to scan for the negative. It's going to have bad thoughts. And you got to remember, too, that emotion and logic are opposites. They're not, they don't uh, mesh together at all. If you're very emotional, logic goes out the window. If you're overly analytical, your emotions can be very low. So know that when you get down, it is uh, it's common um, to have thoughts that aren't really logical and are not going to make sense. So with that, you need to understand and accept that you are in total control of your life. Everything in your life, or you're getting the life, I should say, that you're you're perfectly designed for right now, meaning everything you're doing has created the life that you've developed right now. Everything you've done in your past has led to this moment. The moment that you can say, my bad, or I get it, or uh, it's on me, that's when you gain all the power in life. Now, most people, if you flip that, most people, the way they want to go about life is they want to deflect. They want to put the responsibility on somebody else. They want to give their power away and say, oh, it's, you know, it's, It was his fault. It was her fault. Once you realize that you could control every situation and maybe not the external circumstances, but your attitude towards them, your life will change. Okay. You're getting exactly what you should get. Just remember that. That could be good. It's going to be a wake up call for some of you. And it it could be uh, also the most powerful thing you ever hear in your life or, or internalize in your life. So that's the mindset piece for today. Now, the four biggest nutrition mistakes that I've seen throughout the years, I've been doing this now almost 20 years, studying this stuff, writing programs, training clients, working with clients, doing nutrition for health reasons for certain people, for certain clients, for body composition reasons, for performance reasons. And I've seen a lot. Let's put it like that, right? The first biggest mistake that I see with nutrition is too much restriction of calories. Now, if you are restricting too much, it means you're using a lot of willpower. So that's a diet. Think of that as a diet. Diets don't work. Willpower is anti-habit, anti-habituation. Your brain will only form habit around things that you find pleasurable to do. So nobody finds it pleasurable to diet on a thousand calories less than they actually need per day. And you can't do it for long term. Every time I've dieted for a bodybuilding show, and I dieted way too hard most of the time, but I was eating 15, 16, 1700 calories a day for a guy my size, that's that's nothing. And no matter how disciplined you are, you can't stick with that. Your body will start to shut down, your immune system, your reproductive system, all these other things that require energy. So the way you would figure out your basal metabolic rate or the calories that you need while you're at rest to just maintain function The way you would figure that out in a very simple formula, we'd take your body weight times 10. So if I'm 240 pounds, I'd be at uh, 2,400 calories just to maintain bodily function. 
Now, most people go into a, close to an absolute deficit, which means they'd go with like a thousand calories roughly below that, which is crazy. So restriction of calories. Your body is very efficient, meaning if it gets used to eating, let's say 1500 calories a day, and it kind of adjusts all the energy and the metabolic levels that it needs down to that level, then it's going to get efficient at running off 1500 calories a day. Now, once you snap and, and that willpower runs out and you go back to eating 2,500 calories a day and your body's used to and efficient at running a 1,500 calories a day, what's going to happen with that other 1,000 calories? It's going to get stored as fat. So restriction of calories too much. Most people aren't eating enough or, or, or a lot of times it has to do with stress levels and whatnot that they're not digesting properly or they're not assimilating the food properly. So restriction of calories is the biggest mistake I see to too far of a level. The next biggest thing I see these two go hand in hand, uh, so I'm going to lump it as one, is low fat, okay, which in turn usually means low cholesterol. There are essential fatty acids and essential amino acids, so those are proteins. So it's fats and proteins that we need to get in our diet because they're essential for, for life. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Now, when we go too low fat, we're going to drop down cholesterol, now, your body's going to adjust cholesterol levels internally, depending on how much you're taking in or not taking in most of the time. Now, what happens, what we've seen, though, in people that are on statins and different cholesterol medications and they go on low-fat diets are cholesterol plummets. Now, your brain runs off of cholesterol. Cholesterol is also the precursor to all sex hormone production in your body. So you need healthy amounts of cholesterol. At my last blood work panel in September... My cholesterol was actually too low for my liking. So I went on a, a you know, I, I adjusted my nutrition to try to raise my cholesterol level. So I'll get that checked again soon. But yeah, my cholesterol was too low for my liking. Cholesterol is essential for life. Don't buy into all this stuff that cholesterol is harmful to you and, and all these types of things. There's one part of cholesterol you want to look at, uh, your VLDL, a very low density lipoprotein. Uh, that's a particle size, okay, that's what it represents, but that's dangerous. And then you want to look at your triglyceride to HDL level ratio. That's going to give you your heart risk factor. So those are the key things I would look at as far as blood work and cholesterol. But you want to get those numbers up, okay? You want to have a healthy number of cholesterol. Eat good saturated fat. Eat good monounsaturated or get your essential fatty acids like your fish oils. But get your cage-free whole eggs, get your grass-fed beef, get your guacamole. Things of that nature, okay? What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to set your environments up so they're peak productivity environments? Most people have no clue how to do this. Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you how to do this. Normally, it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener to show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. The next one, as long as we're staying on, well, you'll see actually all four of these have to do with eating too little of these things. So the next one will be low sodium. So low sodium uh, was more of a marketing thing. Okay, it was a way to differentiate and, uh, you know, kind of kind of uh, like we've seen with marketing with low fat or low sugar and all these things. So low sugar, I would agree with, is a, is a generally a healthier thing. But low sodium, sodium is, is essential for life. Every cell in your body has a sodium potassium pump. And... Uh, Sodium is essential for metabolic processes, for muscular contraction, for all these types of things. So when you go low sodium, your energy level is going to drop, metabolism is going to drop, muscular contraction levels are going to drop. So all these things happen. Now, you want to have a good amount of, uh, of pink Himalayan sea salt in your diet, okay? So that's what you would be aiming for. Um, but it, it's if you go low fat and low sodium... Your health is going to suffer. Your energy is going to suffer. It's going to be very hard to, to contract your muscles the way you need to contract them. So sodium is one way that we can get metabolism raised when we adjust it up. And then there's the whole myth of, uh, are I going to retain water? In the very short term, two to three days, you'll retain more water than usual because water follows sodium. So if water follows sodium and we temporarily take more in, that water is going to sit there. Now, as your body wants to maintain certain levels of sodium, potassium, you're going to urinate out some of the excess sodium if we're taking in excess and water is going to follow that out. So that's the deal with sodium. And the last thing that one of the biggest mistakes I see with nutrition is limiting protein too much. And this comes from, you'll see this a lot with females. 
you'll see this a lot again through marketing where I heard you can't eat more than 30 grams of protein at a, at a meal. Protein is not a good energy source. So we need to have the protein sparing macronutrients, your carbs and your fats somewhere in the diet. So protein can go, do its job of rebuilding the body. Now, what protein actually means, if you look at the word, what the actual definition of the word is, of first importance. I believe that's Latin, but of first importance. It's very important. It, it should be eaten first in the meal. Protein is very satiating, okay? I Meaning it's going to keep you full. So going back to, to men or females that don't eat enough protein, one of the things you can do right off the bat is, is give them a protein goal, or if it's yourself, give yourself a protein goal for the day where... Instead of saying you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have this. If I told you you got to have eight ounces of salmon, eight ounces of turkey, and two protein shakes today, for most people, I don't care what else they do. You start on something like that, and their appetite usually is going to adjust itself, and, and they're going to start keeping insulin levels lower, which is you know great for inflammation and fat loss. But limiting protein too much, I do see this a lot in the Indian population. I have, uh, we have at the gym a lot of. Um, Indian clients, and a lot of them are vegetarian, which means they're not getting complete protein sources in. But particularly in the men, you can see the effect that it has when you're eating low protein. Uh, and there are certain things you would look for to see that they have higher than normal estrogen levels for a man or, you know, just by how they're carrying their body fat and where it's distributed. So if we did the opposite to recap, four biggest mistakes. So we'd want to eat more calories, most people. Don't do a diet because you're not going to be able to stick with it and it's going to have the opposite effect of what you want long term. Get more fat in your diet and with that will come cholesterol. Increase sodium levels. So this is the opposite of what you're going to hear almost everywhere else, but increase sodium levels. Get pink sea salt. Put some in your, your water that you're drinking every day. Put a, a dash in there each time you, you fill up a bottle and get more protein in. If you did those things, your health is going to improve, your function is going to improve, uh, your brain is going to improve, and your body composition is going to improve. So that is it for episode number 73 of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. If you haven't already liked it on iTunes, please do so and leave a review. And I will be back next week for more. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.